Minimum, minimum. V1. Bank angle, bank angle. Good day everybody and welcome to another video tutorial about the Aerosoft CRJ for Microsoft Flight Simulator. In this video, we will do the before start items, we will start the engine, do the after start items, and in the end we will also do a flight control check. Okay, the flight attendants just told us that uh, boarding is completed, so we can now close the doors. On the AFB, you can see the aircraft tab here, and you can see that the passenger door, the forward cargo door, and the aft cargo door is still open. We just have to click on this icon, and they will close. Like this. Captain, the cabin is secure. All passengers are aboard. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the captain and crew, welcome aboard this flight. We hope you enjoy flying with us. Before takeoff, we would like to encourage all passengers to watch our cabin crew display the safety features of the aircraft. Okay, we check if the parking brake is set. We can do this on the ICAST display, parking brake on. And now we can ask the ramp agent who is outside to remove the chucks. And we do this by pressing this icon here. All right. Now it's time to start with the before start items. The first thing we will do is switch the beacon light on. This is a signal for everybody outside that we are about to start the engines. After that, we will switch on both fuel boost pumps on the overhead panel. We check that the bleed valves are in auto. If the APU is not on yet, this would be a very good time to start the APU. And we check if the hydraulic switches are still in auto and on. Thereafter, we go to the ECS page on the ECAM control panel. And we check if we have enough bleed pressure to start the engines. The APU is supplying a pressure of 45 PSI, and this is sufficient. We need a minimum of 40 PSI. Having checked that, we go to the doors page on the ECP and we check that all doors are closed. And finally, we check once again if the parking brake is on. Okay, now the aircraft is fully configured to start the engines, but first we will make a short pushback. We go to the ATC menu, ground surfaces, tune Paderborn on ground, and request a pushback. Normally we can start the engines during the pushback, but this pushback is so short that I will wait with the engines after we have completed the pushback. Okay, I will release the parking brake. Parking brake is released. You can see the upper beacon light here. We have a lower beacon light here. And as I said, it is a signal for everybody outside that we are about to start the engines or that the engines are already running. So we will ask the pushback driver to put the nose a bit to the right. Straight back, and this should be enough. Okay, we once again select the parking brake, and we always check if the parking brake is on on the ICAST display. And now that the pushback is finished, we only need to read the before start checklist. We are now in the aircraft tab, we can go to the checklist tab and we have the cleared to start. Personal electronic devices, off. 
APU, on. Electrics, checked. Takeoff data, set. We did this all in the other videos. Doors, closed and locked. We checked that just before the pushback. Beacon is on. Fuel pumps and quantity. The fuel pumps are both on and the quantity 2,770 kilos. Hydraulic pumps, auto and on. We check that and the parking brake is on. The clear to start checklist is completed and now we can finally start the engines. The only thing to do on the overhead panel is to click this button here, the right engine start button. As soon as we click it, you will see a start light, like this. You can hear that the air conditioning is going offline, all the bleed air is needed for the engine start, and you can now see a right engine start message here. You can also see that the N2 is increasing. As soon as it is 20% or above, and the ITT, the temperature of the turbine, is below 120 degrees, we can go to the throttles and we lift up this red ledge. And now we can put the throttle into idle. As soon as we do this, you can see a uh, fuel flow here. The N2 is rising, the N1 is rising. We have a right auto ignition message and you can now see that the ITT is also rising. The same goes for the oil temperature and the oil pressure. And at around 55% N2, the right auto ignition and the right engine start light should go off. Message, of course. Normally we hear this announcement on our headsets because we always want to listen to what the cabin has to say. But if we look at engine number two now, it is stabilized. We want to see an N1 above 20%. The ITT, the temperature, should be around anything between 420 and 580. So 506 is fully okay. And the N2 should be between 55 and 65%. All the values here are in green, so that is good. Now we can start engine number two, uh, correction, engine number one, of course. We go back to the overhead panel and we now have to press this button here, the left engine start button. We press it, we see the start lights, we hear the packs going offline again. And it's the same procedure. The N2 is rising. And we just have to wait until it is 20% and the ITT is below 120 degrees. At the moment, it's only 14 degrees, but if you have a quick turnaround, it may be still somewhere around 100 or 130 degrees. Okay, we have our 22%. We have a left engine start message here. Now we can lift up the red ledge of throttle number one and put the throttle in idle. As soon as we do that, we have a fuel flow. We can see that the N2 is increasing still. The N1 is now increasing. We have the left auto ignition message and the ITT is also rising. We are now just waiting for the engine to get stabilized. Again at 55%. The ignition and the start message disappears. And as soon as the ITT is dropping, you can more or less say the engine is stabilized. As you can see, above 20%, between 420 and 580, 
and between 55 and 65. All the values here are in the green, and you can also see that we have a new symbology here. During the engine start, it was the oil pressure. Now it is a fan vibration. Anything in the green is okay, so this looks good. Now that the engines are started, we can do the after start items or the after start flow. First thing to check if is generator one and generator two in the auto position. Then we go to the fuel panel and we put the cross flow auto overrides into manual by pushing this button. We do this so that we do not get any fuel imbalance between the left fuel tank and the right fuel tank. After that, we check that the bleed valves are in auto. It could be that they are more in manual if we had to do a um, bleed air start or a battery start. But at the moment, bleed valves auto is the position we would like to see. We can now switch off the APU. First, we press the start stop button to stop the APU. And after having done that, we can switch off all power and fuel to the APU. Having done that, we check that the air conditioning is working. We see no lights if it should not be working. We could see a light here, but at the moment everything is okay. Anti-ice. With the weather today, we do not need any anti-ice for our takeoff. And the probes, those we can put in the on position. We now have to check some things on the ICAS. The first thing we have to check is the AC electrical. We check that generator one and generator two are both supplying electricity and they are powering their respective buses. This should be green. Okay. Then we have to check the DC electro. Another push on this button here on the ECP, the ECAM control panel. And now we can check the DC electrical. Once again, we check if all TRUs are powered. We want to count one, two, three ties that are open. We do not want to see a closed tie. And we check if all the buses are powered by checking that they are green. Okay. Having done that, it's now time to read the after start checklist. We go again to the EFB, we select after start, and here we go, the after start checklist. Generators, auto. Electrics, checked. We just did that on the ICAS. Bleed valves, auto. Packs, on. APU, just a quick look. Yeah, APU door closed and no symbology. That means the APU is off. NTIs, off. And those for steering aren't. We can do that now or when we actually start to taxi. I will just leave it in off for now, but I would say to go. All right, we have now started the engines. We have read the checklist. We can do one more thing before we start to taxi. And that is already select the flaps to position eight and set the trim. In our EFB, we can go to performance and we can check our trim here. Take off trim 7.3. Our trim is uh, on the ICAS display here and it should be at 7.3. So we have to trim down just a little bit like this. Okay. The flaps are also eight. And now we can do the flight control check. Before every flight, we have to check if the flight controls can move freely and they are not in any way obstructed. We go again back to the ECP, the ECAM control panel, and we select the flight control button. And now we see the flight controls on the secondary display. Full up, full down, in the middle, full left, full right. And now we check the rudder also for full travel. Full left, full right, and also back in the middle. And that concludes our flight control check. 
You can also do this during the taxi, but as we are taxiing along the apron here, and it's a very short distance to the runway, I'd rather do the check now. The very last thing we can do, if you look at the secondary ACAS display, you can see these three white messages. Manual cross flow, we selected it ourselves, the seat belts and the no smoking sign. We want to get rid of these messages by pushing the status button and just look what happens. There is a box that says messages now. Doing this is called boxing the messages. And now we are not um, distracted by them. If there would be any new message, it would immediately pop up and we would see it because the box would be gone. Okay, having done that, we are now fully ready to start our taxi and that we will do in a next video. I hope you have enjoyed this one and see you soon. Bye bye.